You know, it's been a long time since I've done a video like this, and I'm hoping that this is going to live up to the expectation that I've set for it in my mind before it's even began. Damn, that was confusing. It was on a recent video where a guy by the name of Ryan D left a comment saying, please do a video about the types of prisoners on the rec yard. I miss those types of videos. Ryan D, I miss them too. 24 people would like your comment. I would even heart it and leave a response saying, you know what? You know what? I was thinking about retiring like Tom Brady, but for you and that idea right there, why not? Why not one more season? And look for that video coming soon. 41 people actually like that comment. Thank you guys for, for liking that and for encouraging me. And it don't take much these days. So here we are. For Ryan D and for everybody else who wants to see that video, we're going to film it right here, right now. So what do you say? For old time's sake, let's go ahead and dive head first into this video. Folks, today I want to share with you the many different types of prisoners you're guaranteed to see out there frequenting a prison rec yard. Folks, make no mistake of it, while locked up serving time for a crime you probably deserve to serve the time for, you're going to meet and explore all sorts of different creeds, colors, and characters behind those concrete walls. But Joe, not everybody who's locked up is guilty. It doesn't matter because guilty or innocent, if they're there, well, they're meeting these type of people as well. And who knows? If you've served time or currently serving time, if you're locked up behind the wall right now working on your prison YouTube channel, I commend you. And you, without a doubt, can certainly attest to the fact that every one of these types of prisoners, they're real. Just like that proverbial boogeyman that's alive and well, living underneath your fiance's bed while you're away, serving time. Damn, Joe be going in on this introduction. This joint right here is why I stayed subscribed, Joe. Thank you. That actually means a lot. All right, let's go ahead and get into this thing. We've already spent a lot of time dicking around. You know, when I was first thinking about these many different types of prisoners you're guaranteed to meet. I was reminded of the first prisoners that I ever saw on a prison rec yard who really struck me the most, not physically, but who really were the most shocking to me, like the, that I was the most surprised to see, which is interesting because I really shouldn't have been surprised at all. TV should have better prepared me for what I was going to see going to prison, but honestly, and this is kind of ironic, prior to prison and getting locked up, I wasn't really watching no shows about being locked up. I was living that life for reals. I did not need to watch it on TV. I already knew where I was going. So to say that I wasn't even seeing it on TV, I couldn't have been any more ill-prepared to walk out onto that prison rec yard for the very first time than I was. And again, I was shocked. There were two different types of prisoners who struck me the most, who, who stand out in my mind as being the most memorable from when I first got to prison. In the first type, I refer to as the OGs, the real OGs. I'm not even talking about the dudes who had been down for decades, even though they most certainly wore that, these guys that I'm talking about, but just these particular types of prisoners who were... <laughs> who were in better shape than like a G.I. Joe action figure. Uh, nothing suspect about the fact that I'm saying their bodies were glistening, like not even an ounce of body, not even an ounce of body fat at all. Waist like this big, upper back and torso, like, you know, just straight monstrous type prisoners walking around the track, shirts off. And I'm looking at these dudes like, damn, man, I ain't never seen men in better shape than these guys right here. And then to go even further with that, you, you see their face. And they old as a bitch. These dudes like 60. And they in better shape than the young little whippersnappers, do-rags tied super tight coming onto that prison compound. So those guys were most certainly the most shocking dudes that I've seen. Like, damn, man. Knife scar wounds all in their backs and shit. No, they got some stories to tell. And knowing damn well, hey, boy, Joe all about the jokes and the rah-rah and the, and the laughing and giggling and shit. I, I don't want no problems with you. You got it. You got it. I'll call home right now. Like, 
And I, I never had any problems, but I was just intrigued, I guess. You sound a real suspect. I don't mean to. I'm just trying to explain. You had to be there, I guess, is a better way to say things. So those guys are definitely the first that I want to mention with this video. The next are who I like to refer to as the side yard snacks. Yep, that's it. What else is on YouTube? But wait, there's more. I couldn't think of a better name for these dudes, and I probably should have tried way harder. But who I'm referring to are the second prisoners, one particular prisoner, who just stood out so much to me because I was shocked to see this. I should have anticipated I was going to see exactly this. Old heads, 60 plus, who look like they're in better shape than 18 year olds. And then the side yard snack piece, which actually was a cellmate of a guy, Slick, I believe was his name. One of my first friendly uh, like encounters, like one of the first people that I became friendly with, like an outcast like me, no gang affiliation, whatever. We were, he, was, he was a funny guy, I was a funny guy. Slick's cellmate was this side yard snack, a homosexual fella, and nothing wrong with that at all, playing bop it with another prisoner's <laughs> right there on a prison picnic table. Boy, if that joint weren't like Peter picked a patch of pickled peppers. And I can't even remember how I said it, so I can't even repeat it. When I first met Slick and Slick told me about his cellmate, I was scared. I was like, whoa. Like a legitimate fear came over me. And that fear was, holy shit, I'm glad that's not my cellmate. Slick talking about sharing cigarettes with this dude. And I'm like, God. <laughs> Better you than me. But a little bit outside of your prison side yard snacks, you know, you're definitely going to run across your fair share of lovers out on a prison rec yard. Maybe even lovers engaged in a lover's quarrel. And I don't mean the funny business kind, even though you're guaranteed to see that as well. Not only the types of prisoners you're guaranteed to run across on a prison rec yard, the type of things you're guaranteed to see out there as well. Some things you'll never be able to unsee. Yeah, go to prison. Go. You won't do it. Oh boy, you ever seen two grown men in prison engaged in a prison date night out on the rec yard? They got the blanket out having a picnic. The shit really happens. I've seen it. You're also guaranteed to run into your hustlers, your hustle mans, your fast walkers, as they're sometimes referred to as. You see a guy walking fast across the rec yard? Well, that could mean a number of things. He could be getting chased. He could be trying to smuggle something. He could have to shit real bad. You know, there ain't even no restrooms out on the rec yard at some institutions. You ever been caught between the gates locked out on the rec yard when your stomach starts to knock? I've seen grown men shit their pants out on the rec yard because they couldn't wait nor hold it. How are you ever going to live that down? Crowning a new prison nickname for yourself right there in that moment. Lil Shitty Pants. Lil Dookie Stain. You wonder where that name comes from. Your hustlers, they're all, they're all over the rec yard. And, and sometimes they could be your best friend, too. If you need something, they're going to be who you got to holler. You could get everything from a store box soup, one for two back, to a prison flick that could keep you company on a lonely night in a prison back shower. Hey, back shower, who got next? My neighbor's actually outside. She's probably hearing all of this, ready to call the, call the police. But I don't care. It's what you have to do. <laughs> in an effort to get this video filmed, for sure. You need a new pair of shoes for VI? You got you a new prison pin pal ready to come see you? You need to stunt like your daddy, Lil Wayne song. You better go holler at one of them fast walkers, them hustle mans, out there like a damn door-to-door -door used vacuum salesman. Used vacuum? I think they were pretty much selling brand new vacuums back in the day. Isn't it crazy to think how much the world's changed? There was a time, long before social media and, and before the technology boom, that people didn't have shit better to do. The, the way that you would <laughs> sell vacuums was going door to door trying to sell them joints. And because there wasn't no social media, no TikTok, and no amazingly creative and interesting YouTube channels and videos like, well, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but, you know, after prison show, uh, you would entertain such a conversation in a sales pitch from a guy coming over with a fucking Hoover vacuum. Wow, two suction points. Also out on the rec yard, guaranteed to run into the gangs. All sorts of different varieties of that. Your white gangs, your black gangs, your Spanish gangs, your bloods, your crips, 
your GDs, your MS-13s, your Mexican Mafias, your Aryans, your Ossetrus, your religious sects, the Christians, the Muslims. Sometimes they go harder than the Bloods and the Crips. The Muslims most certainly do. Your Rastas, your Juggalos, it's not a gang, Joe, it's a movement. Tell that to Joker. I nailed, took 10-inch penny nails and nailed him to his living room floor and cut him up for three and a half days and made sure he was alive. And I fed him to his Rottweiler, who he had in the room. Whatever happened to Joker? And with those gangs, you're certainly guaranteed to see them clicked up. Maybe carrying out a gang hit. That's usually pretty interesting to watch. If you're at a level two, you know, where it's pretty safe and you ain't got to really worry about getting killed, it is Pretty fucking entertaining. Better than Ozark Season 4, even though there's not much that's topping that right now. Better than Yellowstone. Better than 1883 with Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. Like, better than the top shows that there are on TV. There ain't not much matching watching one of these level two gang missions take place. It's almost like watching a GTA role play. It's almost like watching that. We got to carry out the task at hand. There's a mission. I need to level up. Just don't get yourself involved in that. If you're at a level two or less, stay away from the gangs. Three or better, maybe you do got to catch a little affiliation. And I, I make a couple of little jokes about the gangs, but there ain't nothing funny about that. Some of them dudes are very serious. Some of them dudes, even at the level two, they're scary. They'll, they'll fuck you up. You don't want no parts of that type of shit, so it's best to just stay away from it. And to watch it as an outsider looking in, man... You're going to guarantee see some wild shit. I've seen a dude get stripped down to his boxers, made to walk the yard for false flagging, acting like he was part of a set that he didn't have the proper knowledge about. What color is the sky, blood? I don't know how to answer that. Blue? Boom! That's the wrong answer, Bob. The price is wrong. Another interesting type of person you're going to see out on the prison rec yard is the joggers. The guys that run. And some of these guys are better than any Boston Marathon runner or triathlon runner. Like, these dudes can run the entire rec period. Talking about wind for days, I smoked cigarettes for like three years, and now I feel like I've got COPD plus emphysema. I can't even stand up without getting winded. I can't even reach for a fork without getting winded. Yeah, the joggers, man, they are an interesting lot right there. These guys, they don't even got to be big or bad at all, but, you know, you might think twice before trying to have some issues with these dudes because you're going to be you, you better knock them out cuz they got a lot of wind. And just cuz they got a lot of wind doesn't mean that they can fight, but still. These guys will be running all over the track. Left side, right side, right side, right side, right side. Get out their way. They take that jogging sh hey, that jogging life is real. They'll run the soles out of their shoes. They most certainly will. Now that we're getting into the more athletic side of things, you're also going to have your workout crew. These guys are just as serious. Don't go sitting on no bench that these guys use to bench press thinking that's going to be a seat for you. Hey, yo, stick, you better get your ass up. Hey, it's curl season. These dudes are eating fish milkshakes for breakfast and shit. Stuffing peanut butter up their ass. You got to get that protein intravenously. Any way that you, I don't know if they're doing all that, but... Yo, the, ro the workout crew is serious as well. And then, let's say you want to start working out like, you know, I'm thinking about dabbling with some push-ups and some pull-ups. You better get in where you fit in, stick man. Think you're going to be using the universal or the free weights? Shit, you better wait till everybody done working out. You ain't going to be holding that shit. Hey, hey, I'm just starting over here. Can y'all take them 45-pound plates off of there? I can only do the bar. What y'all got on there, 400 pounds? I'll give it a go. And you'll shit out a kidney. That shit is very serious. Definitely got your tap mans out there on the rec yard, just like your hustle mans, except a more creative, artistic type. And I never could get jiggy with one doing a tattoo outside during rec, knowing that they got cameras all over the place, and two or two trying to get a tattoo out there on the rec yard. Not only was I scared of getting caught, like it also seemed very dirty as well. Like it never really appealed to me. And then on top of that, whether you're getting or receiving. That don't sound right. Whether you're getting a tattoo or, or, or receiving one, you know, they say, hey, look, man, when you're in prison, you keep your eyes ahead. You keep your eyes on a level playing field. You don't be looking. You don't be being nosy. But at a level two and below, that's all people are. What y'all doing over there? Hey, 
Hey, they doing some tattoo. Hey, look at this joint. He getting the rosary tattooed on his hand. Yeah, let, let him know what we doing over here. You got a whole crowd around. But it happens. Because dudes are reckless and they don't care. And maybe you can get a discount on a tattoo. You also got to think about this too. At rec, it's only like about an hour at a time. Sometimes it may be longer. So dude's going to be rushing. He's going to be trying to get the outline done. He might be trying to color and shade that joint in. Like, I don't really feel like, and I could be wrong. I've never seen it, but I know that, you know, I know that you can get the opposite of what I'm talking. I, I don't really feel like you can get a quality tattoo out on the rec yard. And I know there'll be somebody who says, but Joe, I did. Next up, you got the bleacher beaters. And I'm not talking about playing with any Peters or anything nefarious. I'm simply talking about the guys that like to beat the seats sit on the seats of a bleacher. There's something about sitting on a bleacher on a prison rec yard that is just badass. I don't know where it comes from. It's probably from all the TV movies and shows about prison. You got T-Bag from you know, Prison Break up on the bleacher, hitting the little pocket joint. Bah! You wanna hold this? Yeah, you got the bleacher beaters, man. You got the guys that just sit up on the bleachers for whatever reason, whether they're getting a tattoo, whether they're watching a ball game, whether they're just watching people walk around the rec yard, whether they pass a contraband or gang notes or whatever it may be. Shooting the shit, talking shit, kicking the bobo. The bleacher beaters, man, that's a big part of rec and doing time, man. Bidding. They might have 10 channels at the prison where you're at, or maybe even upwards of 80 channels. I've been to a prison that had 80 channels on the TV, and sometimes even with 80 channels, you ain't going to see nothing as good. Nothing as entertaining as what you're going to be watching on that big screen, meaning in real life, IRL, beating the seat of a bleacher on a prison rec yard. Almost sounds like a country song. I was beating the seat of a bleacher out on a prison farm. That's all I got. Next line's on you. All sports Players, my God, sports is bigger in prison than anywhere in the world, even the professional sports. You got your basketball, your softball, your soccer, you got the horseshoes. Are there, is there such a thing as a professional horseshoe player? You got the volleyball, you got the handball, your sports players. Some of these dudes, man, hey, they come out there, boy, they come out there ready to wreck. You can see some really good games, too, if you don't play. Maybe you just like to watch the games. Hell of a way to do your time. Definitely the sports players. Guaranteed to see them dudes out there as well. You also got, sorry, I'm looking down at my notes. I wanted to remember this. Totally different breed of your sports players. You've got your professional athletes. These are the dudes that missed the calling. You know, Hey, man, if I wasn't selling that dope pack, I could have been in the league. You know, a league of my own. Everybody in there thinks they LeBron. Well, I, I'm... I, not everybody. These particular dudes, these dudes who think they're the professional athletes, every single one of them thinks they're LeBron. Every one of them. And cry just as much as that guy does too. Ain't nothing like, and it's actually one of the more annoying things, coming in from rec, your show's getting ready to come on, you're getting ready to watch Empire, Jussie Smollett. He actually goes to court in March for sentencing. Yikes. I can't wait to do that video again. Revisited, remastered. What will Jussie Smollett be like? Because it's coming. Holler at me, Smollett. You're going to need some consulting. You're going to need to get hard before you go sir that time. You've also got your referees, your guys that work for rec, the rec mans, which in a lot of cases are the referee. These guys sometimes need to wear, wear one of those magazine vests out there when they call in these games. It can get dangerously heated. You call a foul on one of these brawn, brawn, thinking they are type of dudes out there. Uh, but you got them out there. You got the wreck mans who maybe just go around picking up trash and keeping the wreck yard cleaned. You also got the coaches, inmate coaches. And these dudes also take sports pretty tough as well. You're guaranteed to see them. Walk across that basketball court when there's a game taking place if you want to. You might get stampeded like you were in the safari by a herd of wild rhinoceroses. Rhinoceros? That's, that's not a dinosaur, is it? You got your mules out on the rec yard. These are the guys that are smuggling things, whether for themselves or for somebody that they work for. Your hustle mans, if they're, you know, that well-established. Some of these guys might even have a fucking LLC while they're locked up. Hustle Man Incorporated. They could have mules, runners, 
guys that are willing to take the risk for, in a lot of cases, a pretty minimal reward. But sometimes you got a mule for yourself. You ever try to get a TV from one building to another? That's not an easy thing to do. Let it be stolen at that. Let it be stolen. And the dude you stole it from went and told the guards. And then they're out there on the rec yard trying to find that TV. It's almost like a sport trying to get away with what you've stolen. I've seen it happen. You got your fighters out on the rec yard. Guys training for the UFC, trying to throw them hands. And I don't even want to make any jokes about this because I know guys who I was locked up with who are really doing this right now. And a very special shout out to all of them. I did a video years ago called Guys That I Was Honored To Have Served Time With. And I mentioned quite a few of them guys in that video. And all of them guys are still doing really, really well. I have to mention this because you got them. You're definitely going to be seeing your white boys out there. And if you're one of them, well... You might be hanging out with them. Just don't get involved with, you know, any sets that they might have because that could lead to some problems. But the white boys are important to mention because they've got their own little thing going on out there as well. They've got Cracker Beach, for example. Cracker Beach is usually what they refer to the volleyball court as. You've got sand. It's like a beach, except it's not, and it's in prison, and you can't leave from it. But Cracker Beach is sometimes a cool place to hang out. I hung out there plenty of times. I like playing volleyball. But on the flip side of the coin, you're going to have white boys that hang out there just because of its name and because of their association and affiliation. It might be their mission that they've got tasked with to watch out for Cracker Beach. Keep an eye on things. Crazy shit. Not only do you got Cracker Beach with the volleyball, you've got another type of Cracker Beach as well, which, well, there's usually no, no sand there. And it's usually the middle of the rec yard in the middle of the summer, where you're going to see, in most cases, white boys sun tanning, sunbathing. I could never, not ever, do that. Okay, I didn't think that that was right. I thought that that was dangerous. I thought that that was sus. But I wanted to get a tan too, though. So I would just walk around with my shirt off when I was allowed to do so, because in a lot of places, you're not even allowed to do that. You can actually get a charge for that. And the way the rumor goes, the reason why guys aren't allowed to walk around with their shirts off is because guards feel inferior looking at these glistening bodies with 0% body fat and knowing that those female officers are also looking at those glistening bodies as well. And they feel uncomfortable, inadequate. So they devised a rule that says no prisoner is going to be allowed to walk around with your shirt off. Flexing that body that's got Officer Deborah questioning everything she holds dear about her employment at that prison. Should I risk it all for the biscuit all and fall in love with one of these guys? I don't know where I was going with all of that, but yeah, you definitely got dudes who are going to be sunbathing out there thinking they at a real beach, but they're not. You also got your geriatric crew. This is a set you don't want no parts of. These dudes talk more shit than a little bit. You can get beat with the, you can get beat with their mouth. Whoa, that sounded wrong. But don't get to arguing with one of these dudes, man. These dudes, hey, they, their cut card is unlimited in terms of what they're going to say about you. They're going to make you feel so bad and so mad. You're going to be ready to hit the glycectomy bag right off of one of these old motherfuckers. But do it if you want to, at your own peril and risk. Because that's seen as a big no-no. You can't be hitting a dude who's 80. You might get beat up by somebody else. The geriatric crew, they definitely out there. You'll have your gamblers, dudes playing cards, betting everything on hearts, maybe a spades tournament. You're going to have your D&D &D players, your Dungeons and Dragons, make fun of that shit if you want to. Hey, that shit's better than any RP community out here right now in the real world. I've never played it, but you're going to have your rappers, your rap ciphers. Hey, spit something for me. Can I get in this rap battle? Girl, did you send that? Why the hell not? Don't tell me no bullshit or that Jody forgot. Damn! Yeah, man. Hey, that's all I got, man. That's all I got. I, I took a lot of notes on this, and I hope that this was a video you guys enjoyed. I tried to in include some humor with this. When you're out on the rec yard, you're going to meet all sorts of different types. There's probably a shitload that I forgot to mention. Hey, Joe, you forgot to say these, and if there is somebody that you can think of, leave a comment down below and let us all know. Regardless, I hope you never have to go to prison to meet any of these type of people. Because they're all there.
waiting with open arms to welcome you. Especially those side yard snacks, playing bop it with another prisoner's penis. He's there too, waiting for you. So if that sounds appealing, well, you know where to find those folks. And you know what to do to get there. Hey, look, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about this. And as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace!